G'day guys and welcome back to the Back Pocket Plug Up Podcast, the podcast by the battlers for the battlers. I don't mind that rolling off the tongue. Yeah, that, that sounded absolutely fantastic. You've been practicing during the week, you've been rehearsing. I was in front of the mirror earlier, just uh, failing to prepare is preparing to fail as we know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Was that Ron Barassi you said that one? Yeah, uh, Dick Smith. I think I think it was. <laughs> uh, once again, another, another shout out to all the Back Pockets out there, particularly um, the ones that are just plugging away, doing the... Doing the smart thing, long down the line, getting a fist in. Um, seems to be the way of, of the 2021 football, that rebounding halfback through all the rage. Winning the one-on-ones. Yep, we, we want to w- halve the contest. Yep. How good is it when you're a two-on-one and you manage to get a ball up? Yep. That's what that's what we want to say. Just dive on it. And yep. sit on hold it. Hold it in. Hold it in. Yeah. Do it the right way. Um, Rog, how have you been? How you yeah, coming? really good. Really good, actually. Great week of football. We had our um, ladies' night down at the, at the footy club last week, which is undoubtedly the greatest night of my footballing year every year. It doesn't have a thing to do with kicking a ball around. It has everything to do with getting the balls out. Yeah. But so not, not of the leather variety. Bit of a striptease event down at the Banyol Footy Club. Absolutely. We um, get the ladies in. There's roughly 100. I think we had about 110 of them in. And a yep. um, few of the lads are topless waiters. And oh, nice. A few of the lads do do an act up there. I, I do an act every year. And, gee, it, um, there is no better feeling, uh, arguably a better feeling than kicking a goal after the siren to win the grand final than getting naked to a room full of uh, 100 drunken screaming women. <laughs> there is no better feeling. You would have had a... Fantastic week, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I did have a good week. We'll touch on that a little bit later, but uh, oh. yeah, there's we'll, a little we'll tease. See. I think that might be our first tease of the, of the, of the, of the podcast. Because we both went to one of the uh, you know the greatest acclaimed radio schools of Melbourne at slash Australia. When we say greatest acclaimed, it is no longer. <laughs> it is no longer. It did I run out of business, but we did go to radio school, and I think that's called a. Hook. Oh, we've got him. Hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> a kale hook. Uh, we'll go into the, the headline for the week here at the Back Pocket Plugger Podcast. What have we got, Rog, yeah, for our headline? F- for um, Back Pocket Plugger Publications uh, Limited. <laughs> this, is, this is our headline this week on the back of the paper. And it, it was hard not to involve the demons in it. As we know, they're on a they're on a hot streak. But we didn't. This week we yep. thought we'd look interstate. I think there were a few comments actually on the, on the, on the YouTube <laughs> that accused us of big bias. So you've got us. Uh, so this week's headline, Optus Stadium, Birds of Prey. Mm. Playing away... Birds are prey. So I've got a bit of uh, Jeez, Shakespeare mode there. No. Jeez, the one time we get uh, the West Coast Eagles involved, we're potting them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what an atrocious performance. And it's and not a one-off. <laughs> they, maybe it's a, it's close to a one-off in, on that bigger scale, like a 100-point absolute thumping. But Bit of a body of work. Yeah, they just don't turn up away. What is that? They... Got rid of that tag in 2018. They won a couple of big games at the G and then won the biggest of games at the G. And you went, geez, West Coast can do it anywhere. But it's starting to creep back and it's only because you play the power at Optus, you're winning by 70, 80 points. You're playing Geelong... Uh, it's never been a better time to get Geelong at Geelong. They were vulnerable. They've come off a couple of losses... Easy, you know, well, not easy pickings, but a real chance to send a statement and to go down by a ton. Well, it was ninety-seven, I think. I'd love to. I'd love to get inside the brain and figure out the psychology of how they can be so weak and fragile away from home. But look, is it? Squ- it can't be just as simple as we've got the roar of the crowd and that spurs us on. I reckon there yeah. might be something deeper in there. Almost like when they play away, it's almost like in the back of the head they go. We know we've got 10, 12 games in Perth. We know we're going to win those games. Yep. It doesn't that matter that much if we lose at Geelong in Geelong, so fuck it, we won't even turn up. You know what else? It's it, To their credit, it's like no other team every second week is on a three-hour flight. Yep. I can't believe uh, the, you know, the, the Ks. You, you see the stats of like the David Mundys and Matthew Pavlidges have yep. – um, accumulated. accumulated over their career. It's insane. And I do have a little bit of sympathy for them where it's like, it's not just the different ground. It's probably the hotel room, the flight, the the lounge, which, you know, quite nice. It makes, <laughs> like, uh, you are right where, now I've never had to stray more than an hour I drive to Whittlesea <laughs> to, play my, to play my football. Yep. But I've, I feel like this, it's hard for me to fathom that that travelling 
can impact that much on your two hours of footy. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you're jumping on a plane, you go into the hotel. Are you that, like I would think the, the thrill, the adrenaline of playing a game of AFL football is enough to overcome that couple of hours of, uh, inconvenience. of, of inconvenience of travel. But, mm. uh, you know, maybe that this is coming from a man who plays local Division Two reserves football. So. so a couple more outs, I'll give him uh, no Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, a couple of other injuries. Well, Hearns, obviously. How much? How much? Uh, I was so disappointed, by the way. I was looking forward to the wheels falling off the Geelong machine. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Druzy, yep. you know, great friend of the show, messaged me and said, Geelong aren't looking that great. And it was the first term. I tipped West Coast. And I said to Drews, geez, you know, the West Coast are playing well and Geelong aren't playing well at all. But I am really reluctant to write the cats off because every time I do, they perform uh, nine goals in a row later. <laughs> I was just shaking my head. Absolutely absurd. And this is a big danger that um, I hate falling into this trap in the football world is whenever there's a big win slash a big loss, a lot of the the general consensus after the game is negativity towards a team that lost instead of positivity towards a team that won, which I think is a weird little yeah. ne- weird little nuance of, of our game. Yep. Um, maybe global sport everywhere, it's the same thing. But... Um, this is one where I'm giving no credit to Geelong for the win. <laughs> really? See, I look at the Cats and I go, they're back. Uh, Do you? Harry Potter, Voldemort, you know, quote, he's back. Obviously, he's back. <laughs> I've never watched Harry Potter. <laughs> Obviously, Potter, I will get it. I'm um, exaggerating when I say I give them no credit. Of course, no, 100 of course, point win, yeah. you have to give them some credit or, yep. or a lot of credit. But I still think that um, th- this wasn't a case of how good are Geelong. Even though they played well, I'm still in the camp of Geelong – Aren't a, aren't a great team this year. They yep. might be okay. They'll probably make the eight and they might... Who They're knows top them. four at the moment. How have they got there? Are they in the top four? <laughs> They're fourth the I, I, I've, I've watched a few of their games How and they've they seemed that? slow. They've seemed... And, you know, the one game against West Coast isn't going to convince me. Otherwise, I want to say a couple of weeks of it in a row. Yep. But there you go. Yeah, I, I'll put more of it on West Coast being weak as water away as yep. I do Geelong putting in a really strong performance. And I'm not usually like that. Usually I do look at the positive yep. positive side of uh, football. Uh, sure. Last week, uh, Dossie Mack, mm-hmm. I went against the heart and soul of our podcast um, by announcing that I'm now on a wing. I'm no longer no longer a back pocket plugger myself. That was, yeah, behind closed doors and sort of divided us it a did. little bit. Yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of work behind the scenes mm. to seal over the concrete and keep this stru- structure <laughs> upright. Yeah. But I think we've done a pretty decent job of it. No, we have done well. Uh, but this might send us backwards at a million miles an hour. This might send our structure spiralling towards the floor. Where are you playing now? No, this has nothing <laughs> to do with me. This is a theory that I've developed. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw Essendon put in a fantastic uh, performance on the weekend. Yep. And an unsung hero, um, getting a little bit of plaudits now, but J- uh, Jaden Laverde. He is uh, he was drafted as a key forward or a, or a forward anyway. He's gone back and now he's doing bits down in the back line. Yep. I, see, I think he's had six or eight games in the back line and he's doing very well. Uh, then you've got so many other examples of... Forwards turn back, such as your Liam Jones, uh, your Josh Walkers. There, the list goes on and on. Yep. Um, and this is this is what I'm thinking. The if you're a gun growing up, you're not playing in the back line. You're playing in the forward line. Like if you're a gun junior, they're not saying we're putting you at full back. Nine times out of ten, they're putting the gun tall player who's yep. just nose footy. They're putting them in the forward line. Yeah. And I feel like that goes all the way to the top levels of football where the 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 gun tall players tend to be forwards and then the next ones go back line. Yeah. And what I'm suggesting is I don't think it's <laughs> the right idea to use early draft picks. I know that, of course, there's exceptions to every rule, like Jacob Wiedering, number one draft pick, yep. great player, the exceptions to the rule. But I think key, I think forwards turn back is almost a safer, a gun yeah, forward turn yeah. back is almost a safer option than going with an early pick on, on, a, key, on a backman. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? No, it does make sense. I feel like there are so many forwards turning back and and this could be the way the way forward where you don't waste anything. I've always So you only draft forwards from now onwards. Well not only draft forwards, but if you're gonna draft a backman, use a later pick on him because it's more it's more a more a safer option. Mm. Um and uh, there is the very, very, very occasional back that goes forward 
and they do okay. I'm yep. struggling to think of an example Tommy now. Tommy McDonald. Yeah, Tommy McDonald. Kyle Hooker. Kyle Hooker. Once again, a couple of good ones. But for the most part, Key Ford's going back. Darcy Moore. <laughs> Darcy Moore. But he was drafted as you yeah. know, a bit of an everywhere man. No, I, I sort of like the idea of uh, learning the AFL craft as a forward as well. Yeah. Like coming in and um, uh, getting a few AFL games in the forward line and l- playing on the best defenders before going back. I reckon there's some merit to that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you learn the craft and then it's easier, easier to, to defend. Yeah, for sure. So sorry, Backman out there. Yeah, I don't think you're getting drafted this year. Yeah, Backman, I think uh, well, it's a forwards world. We're just living in it, yeah. if we're going to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Speaking of uh, f- exciting forwards, mm-hmm. uh, Cosy Pickett. Oh, he's a real crowd pleaser, that bloke. <laughs> yeah. well, that reminds me of a song. Uh, he was involved in sort of an incident that sparked a fracker. quite a lot of conversation during the during the weekend and yep. filtering into the Monday. Yep. Uh, do you want to talk us through it? Um, well, I've got my Melbourne. I had my Melbourne hat on last week. Mm. Literal hat. Yes. Um, got rid of that. And I've got my Melbourne top on this week. Yeah. So, um, do I wear my Melbourne hat when I describe because there's a little bit of bias, you know. I think so. I think I think wear your Melbourne hat and wear it with pride. If you want to play devil's advocate as well. Uh, uh, I'd love to. <laughs> in my honour. But anyway, so uh, the way I saw it, and it's a w- the way a lot of people are seeing it, but Kane Corns has a, a different opinion, but we'll get to that. Um, so it was in the last quarter. The D's had won. There was about five, six minutes left. And the Tiggies just started getting a little bit, a little bit restless. Yep. Um, they started to... Uh, get a little bit undisciplined and there was a few frees that they were giving away and uh, I was getting a little bit argy-bargy and uh, down the field uh, Cosy Pickett was trying to uh, you know create, create some leading patterns and create some space and he was getting um, some contact with Ryan Mansell yeah. and he was great all Who? day Mansell <laughs> 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 he was great all day Mansell he's got a, yeah. you know, a, a couple of tats he's got a little bit of a mullet yeah um, I think, uh, and he runs around real, real rat bag. But I loved him. I oh, loved we love the rat bag. I can't believe back the pocket r- plugger. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my king. <laughs> I can't believe the the rat bag look has become the in thing. Like it's it's cool to look like yeah. a dirt bag. Yeah, legit. <laughs> and um, and he, he he played that way, old Mansell. But I loved it anyway. Yeah. So he, he got a little bit physical with Cosy Pickett, and I think Cosy Pickett looks like this shy. Um, unassuming bloke, but he's as tough as nails. He's a picket, and he's, he's, I can't believe they want to start a picket. I'm surprised Byron didn't right, jump over the fence and lay, and lay the shoulder in. Exactly, but he's he's got a oh, he's got an edge to him, Cosy. Anyway, could you, could you just quick on that? Could you imagine picking on a bloke and you know at, at school or something? Oh, get me me uncles, you know they're in the right place. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll be able to get him onto you. Imagine picking on on someone. Yeah. They go, I'll oh, get me uncle and Byron picket rocks up the single hardest man in the country. You would. Be shitting bricks. Oh, he's um, yeah, he's caved in <laughs> Ruckman's head. Oh, a Red he, Bicklin's, I yeah, think, oh, was on the receiving end. Yeah. Um, so anyway, there was a bit of a, a push and shove, and Mansell and Cosy start going at it inside 50. It, it was a free. Um, yeah. So Cosy <laughs> went back, had the free, 30 out, goes back and slots it, runs straight up to him, and yeah. decks Mansell, and then uh, Spar goes in. Big fracker. In the end, at some point, Cosy Pickett. Quick look up at the scoreboard yep. while he's getting into everyone. Um, and that's what happened. And and from my point of view, it was like, we get rolled by this mob every year. They've won three of the last You're four. You're speaking to a Carlton supporter, they, mate. They, <laughs> round one every year. They've won three of the last four premierships and we've taken it up to them. And we're not scared and we haven't taken a backward step. Unbelievable. Yep. But uh, Kane Corns, who I think stirred the pot a little bit, but I saw, I saw his view, said... Now, now, Cozzy, um, you know, we've had, the D's have achieved nothing. Yeah. I wouldn't be pointing the, you know, pointing up at the scoreboard to three-time premiership players, to which I say I'm not sure Ryan Mansell's a yeah. three-time player. But I'm not I, sure who he is, let alone <laughs> if he's a three-time premiership player. But I do understand what he was saying, and and the good thing was um, two minutes later it cuts to Cozzy on the bench. Good he's got his arm around him. Yeah. Pretty much saying the same thing. But I liked it because we have been a real doormat football club for a long time and Mm. it was a bit of a statement of we're going to... The young kids on the block have arrived. A little bit, a little bit. What did you think of the incident? Uh, Well, I... Was it a bit of pull your head in or...? No, I've always been a massive advocate for characters in the game, talking points, flair, personality. So I'm on the view, even when someone does something really wanky that I don't like... um, Mason Cox? 
I love it. Like I, I love it too. I, like I think it's wanky. But I love it because it's wanky. I love that we got characters in Mason the game. Mason Cox goes to the extreme of being thirty points down, kicks a goal, and will rub it in. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I don't. I don't mind it. Yeah, or um, he even has just his strut. Like we'll take a mark. It's just a standing point in the game, and he'll walk back with his his next popping. And you're thinking, gee, you know, he, he's really happy with his own work there. Yep. And I think a little bit wanky, but I love wankers. I'm, yeah. I'm a massive Warwick, Warwick Kappa fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and everyone goes, "How could you be a Warwick Kappa fan? He's the biggest wanker in the world." Yeah, all he talks about is himself. I go. <laughs> Exactly. He's a wanker. How good is that? Yeah. Like, let's encourage people to be... Um, no, no, I'm not saying Cosy Pickett's a wanker by any stretch. Yeah. Because um, in his head, he's just been um, manhandled all day, off the ball, unfair treatment, um, not getting paid by the umpires when maybe it should have been, whatever. He kicked a goal and he's, you know, he said, well, cop that one, boys. Have a look at the scoreboard. And I understand both perspectives. I'm, yeah, I do too. Because the problem is now you open yourself... You open the door wide open to you play them again later in the later in the year. Tigers do what Tigers do. They'll use this as motivation. They'll say, of course they will. They yeah. will say during the week of that game, he pointed to the scoreboard. Let's win by a hundred bloody points. Yeah, and let's go up to him and say, how about you have a look at the scoreboard, buddy, and have a look at our three premiership medallions, yeah. soon to be four. Um, so that's the issue. You leave the door open. Yep. So. In isolate, I'll look at that and I love it because I love characters, I love flair, I love personality, but I do understand why Goodwin would be there going, you've just opened the door for them to have extra ammunition next time we play. I watch um, every press conference since 2010, since they started putting them on the website till now. I've seen every Melbourne Football Club coach press conference. And Simon Goodwin is... Yeah, what did Goodwin say about it? I haven't, I haven't heard Goody's opinion. Um, he said he was really proud of him for sticking up for himself. Yep. He goes, he's a 19-year-old kid, plays with a lot of flair, plays with a hard edge. Um, you know, this is the biggest, baddest team in the comp. He said, I was really proud of him for sticking up for himself. But also, you know, we got to be careful. we got to be yep. careful. They're a great football club, proud footy club. Um, and the way Simon Goodwin does conduct himself and, sp- and speak, it, it seems like that's something that he would address and something that, you know, come on, boys... We have achieved nothing. Head down, bum up, we start again, which yep. is what I really get excited by. Yeah, I couldn't agree anymore. I think I think Cosy Pickett uh, had every right to rub it back in their face, but you could come back to bite. Yeah, that's the risk you take. I would like to see him double down. I'd like to see. <laughs> I would like to see you come out against Richmond. You're beating him again, and he dump, he does two fingers, <laughs> sticks a finger up in their face, and yeah. goes, "Come on, boys, have a bit of this." Yeah, that's what I would love to see. Um, I, I was at the game. Yep. So now more broadly, on I can just oh, we've been I rocked up here <laughs> up to beautiful Geelong, and we've been refraining from talking about the excitement around the demons. But last week I was trying as hard as I could to get out of you the the, the sentence that the lids off, or that you genuinely believe you're a chance of the flag. Yeah. I think that you're going to be in the grand final. Uh, I thought that for a little while. <laughs> oh, boy. Are you prepared to say now that there is a, an expectation, more than just a hope, it's not just a distant hope, it's almost an expectation that this is a year of glory? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the lid, yeah the, fantastic. <laughs> the lid's off. The yeah. lid is off. No, the lid, the lid is off. Um, and my definition of the lid is um, I think we have – on our best day, the capability to beat anyone. Yeah. And whether we <laughs> fall at the wayside and, you know, finish fifth and the season peters out or, Not whether, a chance. or whether this is the start of something special. I just look at that team and I go, it's taken years. It has taken years. It's taken Paul Ruse. It's taken, it's taken years. But this, the DNA and the core group, I think on their day could beat anyone. So I think there are two elements to the lid being off. The first is, can are we capable of beating anyone on our day? Then the second question is, are we trustworthy to do that more often than not? Yeah. And you are more than capable of beating anyone on the day. And now everyone trusts you. Like I look at uh, your fixture and everyone's been saying it the last couple of days, you're going 10 and 0. Like, see, I, see, I don't have the, I think that's, I couldn't imagine that. that that's preposterous. And I, I, and that's not a word Carlton, I butchered it. North but. Melbourne, uh, Adelaide and Essendon, is it? Sydney. Sydney. So, a Carlton, North Melbourne, Adelaide and Sydney. Yeah. So, of course, not in that order. But, of course, um, as we know in footy, you know, there's, all, there's upsets all the time. There yeah. are weeks where people don't turn up. There are weeks where teams just turn it on. There's always a team every year where people say, gee, I don't know if they're going to win a game. And they win two or three. They win two or three. Yeah. You know, Essendon after the supplement saga. 
came out and beat Melbourne round two. Yep. So um, don't get me wrong. Of course, I'm not saying that it's guaranteed you're going to win the next four because who knows, Carlton, Sydney, someone could rock up. You guys don't rock up. That yep. could, of course, we know that could happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if you continue to play the way you are playing, <laughs> there is no chance any of those teams beat you. It's only if you <laughs> rock up. Like if Carlton turn up, play their best footy, oh. and you play close to your best footy, you beat us. Yep. So... It's only if you don't turn up, and I reckon you've got that motivation now. Of boys, we're six and zero. I don't, I don't see you lulling. I think I, it's, yeah, I, I think it's a bit of a you've, you're on this momentum train, yeah. and each week they'll be pumping them up, going, let's make it seven, let's make it eight, let's make it nine. I, <laughs> I can't believe we're in this position. Like I couldn't have dreamed of this. This is, yeah. this is, my football club's done this once in sixty years. Yeah, last time we did this was nineteen sixty five. This is. Uncharted territory, and I'm—I I do say the lids off, but I am well aware that you know we do, uh, you know the bottom falls out from underneath us at times, and it has repeatedly. So I, I, I trust this team week in week out, but I am aware that if we go <laughs> nine and thirteen, yeah. or uh, you know six and sixteen, it wouldn't surprise me. But <laughs> what? <laughs> because I, that's I, the most ridiculous thing you've ever said. I would be very surprised. But Melbourne aren't the only <laughs> uh, undefeated undefeated team. Yeah. The Doggies. Yep. Um, where do you rank the Demons up against the Doggies? Do you see do you see neck and neck? Do you see one got their neck out in front? Where was where's the power ranking sit there? So I was going to the Tigers game and I was telling my mate Matt Fox, shout out Fokker. Um, I said if we verse West Coast, no matter where they are, if we verse them at Optus, I'm going, geez, I don't know if we can do this. Um, if we verse uh, Doggies at Marvel, I would go to that game going, oh, this is gonna, they, they could probably run us off our feet. But for some reason against Richmond at the G, the both contested ball teams, I just had a feeling we'd be all right. So I think us against the Doggies, I do think that they probably have our measure. Yep, yep. But... Yeah, who knows? It's it's crazy. It's just crazy. I can't yeah, believe. Yeah, well, this. I'm excited. I'm so excited that the D's and the Dogs are in the top four. It feels um, refreshing. I feel like this is going to be a very refreshing final series. Do you, you said last week that your top four was um, uh, in no particular order? Richmond, Port Adelaide, the Bulldogs, and there was one more. Was it? Were Melbourne in there? I don't think Melbourne were. Oh, in. was this for the end of the year? Was yeah, this? end of the year. Uh, West Coast. Yeah, so have you, would you swap that now and you have Melbourne in there instead of West Coast? I think you do. I still think those teams are better than us. Um, Interesting. Well, a, li- a little bit. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, exciting times. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to harp too much on just the D's and the Baggers because um, obviously they are the teams we support, and there's 16 other teams out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but if we are to touch on the on the Blue Baggers quickly, another yeah. very disappointing game. Um, and there is that much pressure building around us. It now. is. Um, but I don't know. I don't know where the pressure gives way. Like I don't think you sack another coach. Like I don't know where the pressure goes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly just pressure. Right. We just need results, and that that's it. There's not a lot more to it. Uh, but the the uh, I hate to say this because I've ever been the optimist, as you know, with the Carlton Football Club. But yep. um, I used to think um, I used to be under the belief we've got the squad, we've got the spine, we've got the core. A bit like you do now, you have this core group of players, and mm. you have everything else as well. You've got the the bow on top of the top of the present, but um, you had the, this core that is unreal. And I thought we had that core, and we had the talent to challenge eventually for a premiership. But now it's getting to a point where I'm starting to question: even if this team does reach full potential, T gets to the game plan he wants. Is this actually a list that competes with the demons and the dogs? Uh, side and I'm starting to question that and lose lose a bit of faith. But who knows? They come out and beat Essendon, and then they beat the Dogs or the Ds next week, whichever one it is. Because mm. we've got the Ds and the Dogs next, it changes everything. Yep. But at the moment, um, starting to question the list. But enough about the blue values. Uh, goals behind and out in the full. Everyone's favourite segment. Someone commented on the YouTube video as well um, last week, s- suggesting that we stole this segment from Sportsbet. You know what? Yep. I. Don't even know what Sportsbet do, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, but, not a clue. Um, if we did, we didn't steal it from Sportsbet, but we definitely didn't steal it. The so things we have stolen is more yeah, footy classifieds and yeah. um, and the AFL three sixty. Yeah, uh, we are thieves, <laughs> but not a but not a Sportsbet. And you know what? Sportsbet's been stealing from me <laughs> for far too long now. So it's about time we got some redemption. Uh, do you want to open the show with your out in the full? 
Out in the full. Um, so out on the full is the negative. Obviously, you haven't scored. You haven't got a, po- a, a point. You haven't got a concession. It's 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 the bad thing of the if week. If you've ever watched Levi Casbolt have a set <laughs> shot before, you have a fair idea of what's coming next. <laughs> um, yeah, the out on the full for mine is the Collingwood Football Club. Yep. Yeah, we got completely fair. Mine... Sink, no, sinking. I don't think anyone could complain with that. Sinking. Now... Eddie Maguire came out, uh, it was either last week or the week before, going toe-to-toe with Sammy McClure on Footy Classified. And he came to a staunch defence of Collingwood, basically suggesting that their list management strategy, which was essentially, by all means, let's get the group together that can contend for a premiership. Do you want to uh, break that down? Because I wasn't wasn't super privy to it till you talked about it. So they got to a point in 2017, 2018, and they thought... If we can keep this group together, yeah, um, we might have some success. So by doing that, they uh, didn't. It wasn't salary cap cheating, but it was no. Nah, so so I I might get the the core facts wrong, but the general vibe of what of what happened is basically this: um, they had so many players that they wanted to keep, players that they wanted to get or wanted to come to the Collingwood Football Club and they they had the potential to win a premiership if they could get all those players in, yep. but they couldn't do it in a sustainable way. You know, you had players that are on big money and too many players that are on big money was a salary cap squeeze, but they were basically like, all right, if we sign you up and we back end some contracts or whatever, that means that we can get all the players into the club at the one time, play some players less this year, pay more the next year. Anyway, manipulate contracts in a legal way, in a fair yeah. way you're allowed to, yeah. um, to get this group together. So they got the group together and said, bugger it, we'll have a tilt at a premiership, come what may afterwards, we'll deal with the shambolic mess of happening to trade players, play, f- pay for their wages at other clubs, whatever, later. They had a tilt at a premiership and they lost by a kick, a dom shade kick from the boundary line. Now, if they had a question for you, if they had have won that premiership, this is basically what Eddie Maguire was suggesting, if they had have won that premiership and then they lost all the players and they're like, hey, we're in for a five-year, ten-year, maybe five years of pain, a rebuild basically, mm. but we won a premiership by doing this strategy and they were only one kick away from doing it, mm. um, would we be saying that it's a shambolic mess? Yeah. Uh, it, it looks really bad at the moment, but I think it, if you were at – so was it at the end of 2018 they thought like we'll have another crack at it or was it – I don't, I don't yeah. know the exact – I just know that their list management strategy I think was, regardless, you probably back them in to do whatever it takes. Like we were so close or we're getting so close. Let's um, – yeah, let's back end contracts. It's going to get – you know, um, it's going to get real real busy. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. It's going to be a bit of a traffic jam when we do have to get to it all and we might have to squeeze players out. But I think you probably do do what they did. Yeah, so – Considering they didn't win the grand final, it looks so much worse now. You're like Jesus. You lost all your. You've lost a handful of decent players. Now you're playing kids, but they're not even good kids because you haven't had the draft picks and whatnot. Yep. Um, and it looks horrible. But where I do come into a little bit of defence on them is if they had have won that premiership, people probably would have been saying, "Hey, it's worth it by any means win a premiership." But yes, out on the full is fair because they are absolutely <laughs> yeah, it, nowhere it's now. It's just looking. Well, I remember messaging you over the off season, and I was like, "This has to be one of the worst off seasons of all time." Yeah. Like the the trade debacle, it was absolutely crazy. I remember going on trade radio every day and just going, "This isn't true." Like Trelaw yeah. just went on AFL three hundred and sixty last week saying he loves the club. This he's not leaving. And then he, the more and more you find out, he's getting pushed out. And then Jaden Stevenson, what he, he won the Rising Star. He was the best kid in the tra- like. What 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 is happening? And then with the racism stuff, which is no one's fault at the club now, I guess, but uh, there was just bad press after bad press and I was going, oh, golly, that how do you recover from that? And similar to Hawthorne, I remember watching Hawthorne's off-season unfold and it was sort of like, oh, how are they going to recover from that? And you see the way they are. I know it's not a reflection by any means, but it just can't help. Yeah, can't it's not help in, the momentum. They're not in a good place. But Nick Dacos, number one draft pick, will help a bit. I think that might go a long way to curing their rebuild. My out on the full... Similar notion, we're following a disappointing team, the St. Kilda Saints. I think we touched on them a bit last week, so we don't need to barrel them too much anymore. But I love the Saints, by the way. Yeah, uh, um, they're just an okay team for mine. I don't dislike them, don't love them. But I love Brett Ratton. Um, but where I question everything around St. Kilda is I'm not sure if they're really disappointing. Well, they are disappointing. But I think it's also a case of 
everyone overrated their list and I'm not coming out here and saying I'm a I'm a genius or a guru or anything like that but <laughs> I never a shifter. <laughs> uh, but yeah but I never really saw their list and thought Gee, this is this is a like I look at the demons and the dogs list, and this isn't just hindsight. This is going into the year. Demons, dogs. I look at those lists and I go, now they're contending. That is, they've got it, all the tools required to build the masterpiece. But I looked at Saint Killer, and I went, that's not really. Yeah, it might, might be good enough maybe to make the eight, but I don't think they're that's something that could challenge. Nah, and I, I've been of that. Um I thought that for a while. I thought their ins that they did last year that worked, yep. like Zach Jones, um, Hill, Ryder, I remember they were getting praised over that preseason and I was like, I, I wasn't as convinced at the time. It's easy to say now, but um, I always uh, sort of refer to it as the, the backyard test. And that's, if they were standing in my backyard, would I know who they are? And I know that the be-all and end-all isn't whether Connor Rogers can recognise their face or not. Yeah. But they have so many players where they're just a bit, you know, like your Jack Sinclair's and that. We're on there going, is this guy a good footballer? Like, is this guy a premiership winning footballer? Yeah, and I'm I'm sure Jack Sinclair, go, he does go okay. But they, they have so many players where I'm just unsure if they're the calibre of player that takes them to a premiership. I worry a little bit. Um, and... <laughs> The, the question marks we have about the Saints list is the same question marks that I've been through as a D supporter where it's like, oh, I think I've got the right list and I'm sure they do, and and but they're just not performing at the moment so the question marks come. But I, I look at like a Jack Billings as well who when he was drafted, he was going to be one of the elites and he's a great footballer, a yeah. like good solid footballer, but he's not a an well, elite. Yeah, you're, you're looking at players like a Cochin and a Martin and the, that whole nucleus of players that they have and you look at the Demons and the Dogs and they just have – genuinely elite footballers and look at the Saints and they have a lot of good footballers but to win a premiership you need elite footballers Jack Steele's here now I'm I think we're all happy to say that he is yeah he, he is elite I love the way he plays but they don't and Max King will be that player and whatnot but they don't have that many players that made me go Whoa, yes I need him at my football club even a um a Brad Crouch getting him in uh, mm. question, questionable at the time questionable now um. Yeah, they just need a lot. Do a lot of need to do a it lot. It feels work to like it, it's one click away from all just being sorted out and all the questions being removed and like, oh yeah, this is the Saints we were expecting and thought. But I think they're a l- yeah a little bit off, which is um. Let's kick some behinds. I love it behind as much as the next bloke. Did you hear what happened with uh, Tom Lynch's sub? Yeah, that's what happened there. So uh, that's, a de- that's, that's a debacle. That's a debacle. Adelaide have come out and defending it today. How? How? <laughs> yeah, so he took – he was about to get subbed on. He needed to go down to the rooms, get changed. Will Hamill came off. Yeah, he needed to get um, warmed up. He needed to do – he basically just wasn't ready to go. Yeah, so Adelaide had Tom Lynch as the sub. He hadn't trained all week, hadn't trained for a couple of weeks. He's got a toe injury. Essentially, they didn't want to play him. No. And they wanted to get, I believe, Chase Jones – uh, they wanted him to have a game in the sandfall instead of being the sub and not playing. Yeah. So they took down an injured bloke. He could get through a game, but, you know, ideally we don't have to use him. They had an injury earlier in the game. Uh, I can't remember who it was. Someone got done in the ribs. And, um, yeah, they were a bit reluctant to use the sub then, but then they definitely had to use it in the third term. Apparently Tom Lynch didn't have boots on. He wasn't strapped. He was just sitting and on the And then when pie. he went out there, he could hardly run. He was uh, unfit. And I don't mean that cardiovascularly. But yep. he just couldn't – he wasn't fit to play football. No. Nah. So, shambolic. I under – there is there is a bit of logic I understand where um, it pisses me off that Matt Kennedy was a sub for Carlton and I couldn't speak – I love Matt Kennedy. I love the way he goes about it. He was a sub and he's missing out on a VFL game. So, you look at the VFL and our two best on ground was Paddy Dow and Will Satterfield. So, if they're going to make a change this week – um, it's probably likely that they're going to bring one of those blokes in, yep. which is stiff on Kennedy because he was – Sub, he didn't get the chance to get best on ground in the twos. Yeah. So I sort of understand Adelaide's prerogative of they wanted they don't want one of their gun round one draft picks, Chase Jones, wearing a vest and yeah. getting cold. But there's a fine line. There's a difference between not wanting Chase Jones to be uh, wasted in the twos and playing a bloke as a sub that cannot play because he's injured. Well, the Crows were flying in that game, five goals up ish uh, yeah. towards late in the game, and they got overrun by the Hawks. So uh, it. That um, cost them. Your behind sort of transitions nicely into my behind, mm-hmm. um, which is coaches 
press conferences and lack of transparency. Uh, I'd love for them just to be honest, just to be, how hard is it to just tell the truth? So Adelaide, um, uh, their coach, remind me of his name. Um, Mike? No, nah, um, no, nah, Matty Nix. Matty Nix. Why did I? Jeez. Yeah. Matty Nix has come out and um, that he's in torch def- Yeah, he's defended the decision to have Tom Lynch as a sub. Why can't, how hard is it to own the mistakes? To come out and say, we did this poor, we were wrong to do this or we aren't good enough or something and we will hope to be good enough next week. It's so much better than spin. Yep. Spin is, and the reason why spin is my behind is because I understand why they do it. Yeah, because you, they you pre- want to make the club look as best as they protect yourself. Can. Protect yourself, but it's just everyone with half a brain cell can identify that it's spin and just it makes you look even worse. So David Teague comes out each week after a disappointing loss and goes, "I have that much belief in the team. We won the inside fifties. We won this. Talks about all the things we won, and I understand why he does that. He wants to still fill the." I don't know what he's saying behind closed doors, but he wants to protect his players in front mm. of everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. It makes plenty of sense. But the me- you owe it to the members. Like our, the members are seething. Like we just feel like we deserve more. I'd wish he would come out and <laughs> say, we were not good enough. We are we-. Like Adam Simpson came out after the West Coast loss and he came out and he said, we were weak. Um, and it said something like, I think he might've even used the word embarrassing or he used very strong terminology. Yeah. And that's what the members want to hear. Cause then you go, the coach understands. Yeah. The coach is on the same page as us. They are weak. They are embarrassing and they need to be better next week. Mm. And when T comes out and he doesn't identify those issues it makes you think, does he realize how we're feeling and does he yeah. empathize with us or not? Because the way he's talking, that's not how we're talking. That's not how 100,000 of us or 80,000 members are talking. So my my behind is spin, tell us the truth, be on our page. <laughs> well, how was um, Nathan Buckley uh, a little bit of spin on AFL 360? They were saying, oh, you know, Jordan Degoe grabbing the phones, bit not on. And he goes, oh, well, the bloke who had concussion gra- grabbed the phones. You know, it, it was the bloke who got subbed out of the game <laughs> for concussion. And everyone was like, why would Gary you say that? I think it was Gary Lyon who came out and said, <laughs> well, he could pick the right two phones out of t- 22 <laughs> that happened to belong to the players. So he couldn't have been two yeah. out of whack. So, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, there is a fine line. I, I'm all for going into bat for your players. Like, for example, Paddy Dow's been getting bashed from pillar to post. Mm-hmm. I don't mind him coming out and saying, no, we still believe Paddy Dow will will be become a player. We have faith in him because if you come out and go, Paddy Dow's no good. Of course, that's going to ruin his confidence. You can't hear that. Yep. But so there is a line where I understand spin and backing your players, but stop with the nonsense, you know, get on the same page as the members and feel the same emotions we're feeling. I'll go with my goal Please straight, straight through the big sticks. And it's from the same game as my behind the Adelaide game. Riley Tilthorpe, five oh, on debut. Did you pronounce the name right? Cause it seems like everyone's been struggling with it. Maybe it's still No, I think it's Tilthorpe. Maybe it is, but I feel like there's a lot of confusion. People are saying Tilthorpe. People are like it's a confu- The syllables are confusing people. Well, I got a twenty nine point seven five eight so I don't back in anything that I say. But can we get the spelling, please? Well, I'll go on. I, I think there might be a double T H in there, which is very, very peculiar. Yeah, it's T H Thorpe. So Tilthorpe. Yeah, Tilthorpe. That is the probably the the worst name I've ever heard. <laughs> not well, because it's a particularly ugly name or anything like that, but Thorpe just does not... I've always said I want to name my son um, or daughter. I give him a name that's a commentator's dream. Yep. So uh, the uh, Rocky... Ro- Rocky Rogers! Taking a screamer! <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Thorpe is not a commentator's dream. Connor it's a commentator's, Yeah, a commentator's nightmare. Yeah. Shame yeah. that he's the type of player that is capable of taking hangers and taking the game, game by a scruff of the neck. 5-1 debut. How easy is footy? He's just <laughs> rolled in. He's done the Ryan Fitzgerald. He did that. 5-1 yep. debut. Hopefully. For the, for the and if current trajectory, it's only a matter of time before he does a couple of ACLs and <laughs> go, wins Big Brother. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's going to be a great uh, breakfast show host one day. <laughs> yeah, he's Riley Thilthorpe. Thil- Thilthorpe in Thilthorpe. the morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nah, yeah, but we love a big debut. And once again, we've touched on this a bit during the during the potty, the first three episodes, is the kids play the youth. They're, yeah. they're exciting. They, they're hungry. They want it. Stop playing the older blokes. And, but then, once again, do play the older blokes that are performing. <laughs> keep playing David Mundy. But the blunt, older ones that aren't, don't just keep gifting them games. Yeah. Great goal. I What's like yours? That. My goal, I think you'll love this one as well. Uh, 
the biggest crowd since the start of COVID globally. The MCJ Anzac Day crowd. <sighs> Not bad. 78K or something like that. Yep. Screaming fans and just how lucky are we to be born in this country? Oh, man. Yeah. Fitting on Anzac Day, which is a day all about, you know, the celebrating... Patriotism. Patriotism. And how lucky we are to be in this country. What we, what we had to fight for to get to where we are now and yep. the sacrifices that were made. And it's something that can be overlooked a lot and we don't want to get too deep into it. But, like, we are, you look at what's happening in India and other countries and here we are. Horrendous. You know, we were all complaining. We were Everyone was having a go at Dan Andrews. Everyone was sitting on their high horse. Yeah. And I'm, I don't, I'm not big into politics. I don't know what he did right, what he did wrong. What I do know is that we had 78K at the MCG to watch a game of footy between Collingwood and Essendon and other countries. Hospitals are over... over Packed and sport is the last thing on their mind because it's just life is and death is what's important to them right now. Yeah. So that is my goal. Yeah, unbelievable. Not a mask in sight. Um, people doing the right things with the QR codes, getting into the game. Um, I think the MCG and all the sporting grounds are doing a really good job of keeping people safe, and that's the most important part. And yeah, no, it's um, I just thank God, thank God we're we're hopefully uh, you know put it all behind us and. I don't know. I'm just loving it. I'm just loving it as well. We're in the best city in the world, uh, supporting the best sport in the world, and there's no doubt that the back pockets are the best position in the world, particularly <laughs> the pockets. <laughs> That's shed a tear sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have anything else, or are we out of here? Uh, well, well, let's quickly just touch on... Um, where do you sit on this? We won't we won't go into it too much. Yep. Jason McCartney, I think the free count, kick count at half time was something along the lines of fifteen to three, um, in favour of the Bulldogs. Was it the Bulldogs the yep. Giants played in favour yep. of the Bulldogs? Um, he wasn't happy at all. He came down at half time, berate, uh, reportedly berated the umpires, and now there's um, they're going to cop the repercussions. Yep. Um, do you think that if there is a very obvious I don't think any umpire would ever go into the game with bias, but I think if you you could go into a game and if you make a human error mistakes, but a handful of them coincidentally goes to the one team instead of the other, do you think that there's a, a room for a please explain or an umpire? An ex- Middle of the game, going down and berating them. Absolutely not. Not no, at all. It's not a good look at all, is it? And, well, what if the umpire... Uh, gets a little bit nervous or it actually rattles them so they go out and they start giving free kicks the other way and they've you know McCartney's effectively um, changed the course of the game or you know changed the moment or whatever like it's it's you can't intervene and you can get frustrated or maybe email the AFL at the at end of the game and or whatever but yeah. well, I think um, yeah I don't think there's a place for it at all it's what I'm gonna I've said it before on the show it's something that I'm pushing uh, you see it all the time in the media. Like Gary and Tim love doing it on OCN. They really push hard for something and start some movement and a lot of the time they're able to hear, have their voice heard. I would love to see a captain's call in the AFL where you <laughs> get one or two reviews. You can't waste it. If you think there is a clear and blatant error, review it. They have a look. But where, where would you use it? Because like if there's just a push in the back in the middle of the ground that wasn't seen, you probably wouldn't bring it out. It'd probably be like goal square, got your arms chopped, they didn't see it. That's the beauty of it. You know you've only got a couple or one or two reviews, and you know that um, come the end of the game, when the game's on the line and you're down by a goal, you could need it most then. So you wouldn't, <coughs> excuse me, you wouldn't use it on a little ticky touch no. because you know how valuable, that is the most valuable, you would cherish it. You yeah. would absolutely cherish it. Um, and I think that there is scope for it in the game. And I'll imagine the drama it would add. If, if the free kick um, isn't paid, review it changes the game and also imagine the drama if um, a a rather selfish player uses a review goes oh I'm reviewing that gets it wrong the drama that comes with that it would just cause so much more Mm. discussion it'd be great for the game and I think it could make similarly to how the DR uh, the DRS can save howlers in the cricket it could mean we get the more more correct decisions in footy and more justice is served. As long as it didn't have like more longer pauses and stoppages in games, that would be the only thing that Well you only get if you only get two and you and you assume the captains only use it when it's a certain you wouldn't use it on a fifty fifty and if it is a fifty fifty, if it's down if it's not black or white, if there's grey, it stays with the umpire decision. Yep. So you would only use it in an area where it is a black or white Amazing. The drama would be beautiful. And I, I, and people hate when the rules change of the game. I hope that if this conversation ever comes up, we're open to the idea and it's not straight to the 
No, oh, stop changing the rule brigade. Yeah, for sure. Um, just before we go, how's in under 14s? My coach at the time, uh, <laughs> we versed a, a team who dropped like three A's to the C's. Yeah. So it's not even three A's players that played at the B's. They dropped them to the C's to try and qualify them for finals. Right. Under 14s, these A players were some of the best. They were built like men. Yep. And our C's team in Division 6 were all just under 14s that were 12-year-old bodies. Division 6 C's. Yep. So our A's were in Div 1. Right, okay. Our B's were in Div 3. I thought you meant there was another sub subcategory <laughs> down in Division 6. They split them into three groups. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, right. So, so it, we were a C's team, a, a threes team yep. in Div 6. Anyway, um, we were getting our heads ripped off and uh, there was so much drama at this game that my coach, as the umpires were going off, just rinsed them. Protect the kids! you got to protect the kids! What are you doing? Because we were getting dumped on our Did heads. Did he get sacked? He got. He went to uh, AFL Victoria, had a big hearing, and uh, he got banned from coaching for two years. Really? <laughs> and, uh, he, and that's what. Wait, so I wonder what happens to McCartney. Yeah. Well, there you go. And that's what the people as the conversation is now. Is if you let Jason McCartney get away with it, you send a message that you're allowed to do it at local level as well and break the umpires at halftime. So it needs to be stamped out. I'm not for it. I've never been an umpire basher. So yeah. Yeah, it was a real uh, real bizarre afternoon at Birder Reserve. Anyway, I think that's it for the Back Pocket plod, uh, Plug Up podcast for this week. Rog. Bit of a mouthful, but does roll off the tongue nicely when you get roll it off right. the tongue. Uh, thanks for joining me, mate. My pleasure, mate. And what a pleasure it is every Monday. Um, keen to watch the footy this weekend and chat to you this time next week. Catch you then, mate. Uh, beautiful. Thanks to everyone who listened. Thanks to everyone who watched. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Keep plugging Back Pocket. <laughs> <laughs>